All right. Good morning, everyone. This is um, Sri, and uh, welcome to the partner call. Uh, this uh, morning, we have uh, joined by my colleague, Ryan, and he is going to take up the session and quickly go over some of the key product updates for this week, um, as well as some of the documentation, videos, and other equally important items uh, around the product. Uh, he's going to share updates of um, where you can find these resources and uh, what is more that you would like us to work on. And, and that essentially is going to be the, the basis of the call today. Uh, over to you, Ryan, and uh, take it away. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sri. Thank you. So, yeah, and Sri, thank you for joining us. I know you're traveling. Uh, Sri is with uh, some of our partners in Denver uh, for a PAX 8 event. So, Sri, thank you for My doing pleasure. this you. while you're mobile. Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Ryan Seymour, uh, Director of Consulting and Education here at Connexicure. Uh, one of my, you know, one of my main roles, I, I work with our U.S. support team uh, out of the Tampa office. So many of the partners may have interacted with me through various onboarding or sessions or support. <clears throat> um, we're going to go through V4 updates primarily today, uh, and then we're going to also cover some small V3 updates that are out there. And then I'm going to share a couple and talk about some of the resources that are coming down the pipe for V4 that myself and, and my team are currently working on. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So first thing is the notifications and integration profiles for the integrations have kind of been reimagined with some new features. Um, we've also updated the UI to indicate when they're actually set up. You'll now see the green uh, check marks on the corner like you've currently seen in the current version. So when you've set an integration up, you'll get the confirmation and then the little number in the corner will tell you how many different credentials you have for that specific integration. So we'll use the ConnectWise one as our uh, sample, but this does apply to pretty much all of the PSA integrations, right? Whether it's you know Autotask or any of the other ones, they all function in a very similar fashion. So when you come into the new setup, we're gonna you're gonna see these. The, oh, I'm sorry, called levels, and what the levels are are similar to how you can do it today. So you can add multiple sets of integration uh, instances to this profile. So if you had access to multiple ConnectWise instances and you wanted to integrate them, you could tie them in here. And so a use case for that might be a lot of partners will have a ConnectWise instance for production, and then they'll have a sandbox or, you know, a test instance of ConnectWise. So you could use that to uh, set up a connection to your test. I'm, I'm also looking at the chat. Uh, I see someone's having audio. Is that is that everybody or is, how's the audio? Can we just get a confirmation maybe in the chat if the audio is working for everybody? Feels good here. Love yeah, clear? Okay. This will be recorded. Awesome. Thank you. Looks like I got a lot of people. Thank you, guys. Just want to make sure audio is good. So if, if someone is having issues, of course, we'll get you the recording. Um, so yeah, use case, multiple credentials for a ticketing or a PSA system, right? Your production and a test environment. It's always a great idea to hook up your test environment if you have one. Uh, it's a great spot to sandbox and understand what kind of ticketing alerts you're going to see, what they look like, get them dialed in and then cut it to production, right? Um, so <clears throat> some other uh, additional updates to the integration settings are the event sets. So the event sets in the, in the current version are, tell us what do we want to get an alert for, right? What's going to create an alert in the system? And so we'll signal, we've got some new ones, again, around assets being added, new companies being created in the systems, new ports being open, and of course, there'll be a number of new event sets uh, that will populate these windows, along with a new section for solutions. Uh, so anything that's marked as a solution, which is now known as the remediation plan, we're now calling it solutions, because it's how you fix things, uh, we'll have some of those capabilities there. And then of course, the notify by. So now we'll have the ability to break some of these notifications up at the customer level by company or by asset, which is gonna be nice for some of the partners that are dealing with really large volumes in some cases, or if you've got smaller ones, you may be flexible with this, but 
this will give you some flexibility in how those alerts are being handled and how many, what's the ticket volume might look like in an environment. So this is just kind of a walkthrough showing you once you, what's really nice to, let me back up. Once you create an event set, the event sets don't work unless you have an integration profile or integration rules with them mapped. So the system's now prompting you and saying, hey, we see that you've created this. Do you want to now create your integration profile for it? So it's kind of like almost a wizard style walking you through saying, hey, you need to set this next screen up, which is, I think it's very intuitive and helpful. And then you'll land on your integration profile rules, right? Which is where you tell that integration how that ticket's being created. So again, this is all in the V3 product today. For those of you that are using these integration settings, you're probably used to seeing these. So no change there. Everything's kind of in parity. Those will tie back to the event sets that we talked about. You'll save those. And then again, it's that same thing. It says, hey, we now see that you have these two mappings. Do you want to apply them to your companies? So it'll say you can say yes or no to kind of wizard you through that. And you'll land on your mapping screen. Again, in the current version, we have the same functionality. So the parity is there, mapping an event set to an integration. And anybody's new to this, we do have documentation. And I did record a YouTube video on this setup in the V3 product today. And of course, we'll have a video for the V4 as well. So those are going to be your company mapping and integration setting updates. <clears throat> Next is going to be a new alert menu that appears on the right navigation toolbar of the in the new UI. So when you're on the assets view, we will have a notification bell that's going to show you alerts from the system. And you've got some examples there in the screenshot of those alerts uh, where things like remediation available. So if the system says something that, hey, we can fix, we know how to remediate, you'll see some alerting for that along with vulnerabilities being found, right? And what we're calling those problem groups, right? So vulnerabilities will show up in the problem groups based on the problem group, it's fine. So if it's a CISA vulnerability, if it's a critical, you know, if it's a high, medium, a low, along with some of those other actions like assets being added or companies being created. So this is very much similar to our timeline feature, again, at the asset alerting window, sort of. So. Again, a really nice way for our partners now to be able to really see and understand what the portal is doing, what it sees, what kind of assets are being passed through the system. So in the event of troubleshooting, uh, you know, this makes things a lot easier for everybody and really also learning, right? Learning what the tool's doing and what we're actually scanning in those environments. So I think it's a nice job by our dev team really bringing some transparency to what the tool is doing and what it sees. So. That'll all be populating in your alerts window, right? These alerts, of course, that are in our tool, if you have ticketing enabled, can then pass themselves over as a ticket into your ticketing system. So this is just an example of what one of those tickets coming over for a new asset being added. You can see we're giving you the IP, MAC address, host name, et cetera, so you know what assets are showing up in your environments. An example of a pending remediation. So we find a vulnerability and we say, hey, we found you know, these assets, these issues. We're giving you the issue, the, the fix, which is the hyperlink in that ticket. So again, if you send these over to your ticketing system and they're not being automated you know, by your RMM tools or some other scripting, because a lot of our partners have some really cool automation out there that can fix the things, right? But if your engineers are touching these things, you're knocking sock. You know, I love it because the, the link to fix things are generally there for them. So they don't have to do a ton of ton of trouble shooting and searching for stuff, making it easy. And another sample of critical vulnerabilities being found. Asset ports being discovered, right? So, hey, new ports being opened on machines. Again, a useful alert for the team to understand what's being, what's changing in the environments, right? And again, that alerts fly out, we, we talked about earlier, you're seeing some of those here when things are closing. So when those alerts are closed or remediated, again, that's recorded in that timeline and also, of course, reflected 
in your ConnectWise system with an update. You can see there in the, the description, we've updated it, remediated is resolved. We tell you why, where, version, all that good stuff. And of course, those tickets will close, right? We always get that question. Do the tickets close? Yes, they will close. Again, if you close a ticket in your PSA tool, someone just closes a ticket out, but it's not actually remediated in the tool, the, the tool is going to always still show that is a pending vulnerability. Once it's actually resolved and the tool sees it resolved, then it can make that call back to the ticket to say, close this out and update it with that note. But if someone's already closed the ticket, you're not, you're just going to get a ticket update. I get a lot of questions around that. And again, if that's not clear, we'll have it in our documentation and in our support team will help you guys out, of course, as always. Yeah, closed status, right? So again, mapping to your close. And again, these settings are controlled inside of the integration profile settings. And so just as a tip, uh, when, when you do these integrations with these tools like Connect Secure or really any tool that's going to touch your ticketing systems, whether it's ConnectWise or Autotask or any other tool, you might want to consider a status that has some type of earmark or indication that it's being closed through automation as opposed to being closed by an engineer. So breaking up those closed statuses, I find it really useful when we're looking at reports, when we're looking at tickets, you can start to understand what portion of those tickets are actually truly being automated, automated and closed versus someone's having to intervene with them. So mapping those in the in the profiles can can help that process. So it's a tip that I've seen some other partners do. We've added email notifications the same. So again, parity with the current release. We've got email integrations with Office 365. We've got a cyber CNS email method or the plain old email, which is just your SMTP version. Uh, this is so if you want to email reports or email out of our system, this is the relay or the authenticated email users we're using to send on your behalf. Okay, and th This does exist in the current version. With the V4 release, though, of course, we're going to be adding in those new event sets and those new integration profile capabilities that are going to enhance the way that email flow works. But as far as setting up the events, setting up the profiles, which is where the emails go to, all that's going to work very similar. And then again, a sample of one of those alerts hitting a Gmail account as an email. So some of our partners that don't have a ticketing system, uh, this may be a method that they use to send an email somewhere else or perhaps to just another email box that integrates to a third-party ticketing system right? that we don't have an API with. So again, email notifications added along with the ticketing event sets and integration status. And these are just some samples showing you guys what those emails look like, very similar to what you see in your tickets in the body descriptions. And again, the problem groups that we've created for you guys, when we identify vulnerabilities now, we're putting them into those categories like their CISA or their EPSS score is high or their critical severe or high or SMB related or SSL related. Uh, the groups, I, again, are really useful insight that you're seeing as they come through in some of these emails, along with ports. And those are our V4 updates. Um, I've, I've got a couple minor V3 updates that I'm gonna share with you guys. Um, on the V4 side, we've also got that confirmed with uh, what was that, 65 partners currently that are beta testing our V4 portal. Uh, so shout out to those partners. I assume some of them are here with us. So we appreciate everyone's feedback. Uh, I would say the beta is going really great as far as how much feedback we've gotten in a short window. Uh, the dev team here, as Shiva mentioned, you know, is really started to shift their focus to the V4 platform. So we're seeing a lot more rapid development of the platform based on all the feedback we're getting. Um, along with all the partners, myself, my team on the US support team in Tampa, we're also diligently testing the application. Um, so we're giving the team a lot of feedback as well as the partners. So 
you know, just trying to give you guys an update. We don't have any, you know, dates yet on the migration per se, when we're going to start seeing the migration show up in the V3 portal to migrate your customers. Uh, I, we don't have a date this week yet. Uh, I know the team is again, still working on that. Uh, we're looking to do 100% feature parity before we do that. Right. So some final, uh, some final touches kind of got to get put onto the application before we can say, Hey, go ahead and migrate your customer. Cause we don't want you guys to migrate your customers and then say, Hey, you know, what happened to my scheduler or my external scans or some of the custom roles and things that you're doing with, with the current release. We want to make sure that that parity is there. So that's kind of where we're at working through the V4 side. Anybody that's not on the beta and wants to get on the beta, um, again, it's an open beta from what I've been told. So hopefully it is still, because I just told everybody here. Um, you guys can contact our support team. If anyone wants to get on the V4 beta, feel free to you know drop an email to our support team, support at cybercns.com and just say, hey, I want to get on the beta. We'll get you added to the list. And I know there's probably some questions coming in on the chat, which I'm going to totally get to as soon as I get through these last couple of V3 updates with you guys, okay? So V3, uh, current portal remediation plan. We have added a filter on the remediation plan to exclude companies. So when you're looking at the global view and you want to remove just a you know one or two or a group of companies from that view, you don't have an exclude up on the top. We've added a new tab for Mac assets that will show the installed drivers on the Macs. So again, just on the Mac asset, if you go down to the bottom of the asset view under the inventory overview, you'll see that new tab shown there where you'll get the list of drivers. And I believe this is our last change for V3. This is going to hit the way reports are being sent from our V3 system. So one of the things that I have seen uh, a lot of is emailed reports that leave the CyberCNS system were coming from support at cybercns.com. And so what was happening in some cases, those reports were being emailed to third parties, to some customers in some cases, and they were responding to them and they were coming back to our support team. And so that was causing a lot of confusion for partners and even for our, you know, our colleagues internally. So this change is going to affect kind of all that for the good. And so any time you're emailing out reports from the V3 portal, they're going to come from notifications at connectsecure.com as opposed to the support at cybercns.com. Now, I would always recommend if you're emailing a report out to your customer or to your company and colleagues, that it should come from your internal support reply to address, right? So that if somebody does reply to it, it's coming back to your you know, PSA or it's coming back to an actual email that someone's going to receive as opposed to going to nowhere, which is if you reply to notifications at connectsecure.com, it's basically going to go to nowhere. So that change will is in effect it, uh, as of right now. So if you're using scheduled reports, you may want to just make it, take a peek at the settings. Right. Added last vulnerability scan time on the evidence page. So if you're in the remediation plan and you tap on the little magnifier to look at the evidence, you'll see a new data uh, value added there for the last vault scan. So last time that machine actually ran a scan. Again, helping validate things that are, you know, should or shouldn't be there based on the last scan. So that's, again, short list of updates on V3s. Um, again, you know, thank you to all the partners that are that are currently beta testing with us. Uh, just a couple small updates I want to provide. I don't have a slide deck for these, unfortunately. Next, you know, next week, I'm hoping to have a, a small preview to show, show the partners. Um, we are working on rewriting the entire V4 documentation in our Confluence site. Um, I've already got a tremendous chunk of it done. Um, myself, I'm actually writing a lot of the documentation. So I've been going through our V4 portal, you know, pretty rigorously 
uh, since I'm writing the documentation, you know, I'm finding a lot of the, just the small details that end up making the big picture. Um, so it's been great for me to get that insight, um, but also working on writing a cleaner documentation for the V4 release so that everything is documented clearly for the partners. We're also going to be rewriting uh, and republishing, re-recording a new YouTube channel um, for the V4 release. So if partners maybe that don't aren't aware of it, if you go out to youtube.com slash at ConnectSecure, we have a YouTube channel where we've got, you know, I don't know, there's about 30 videos out here by now um, where we've tried to bring some short bite-sized content to help educate the partners about the tool, the modules, how to use it. We're going to kind of reimagine this for V4 again. Um, we're going to re-record. We've gotten a lot of feedback from partners on this video content about, you know, organizing playlist, organizing training for departments, like, hey, which should I show my sales guys? What should I show my service guys? What should I be showing the account managers and executive guys? So we're going to republish a whole new library of V4 content. I've been waiting to record until we get the final UI in place for V4. Um, so we want to make sure, of course, those things are all kind of polished up and then we will start to release those. But they're definitely a high priority on my radar with my team. So we will be re-recording a new V4 content here covering all the application breakdown, use cases, some best practices. Um, and we'll, we're going to do some webinars too as we head into 2024. Um, you know, my team, we're working on, you know, education and resources for the partners to help you guys really get the most out of this tool, right? This, uh, this tool's got a lot in it. Uh, it does more than just vulnerability management, compliance, risk assessments, right? There's all these new things. And uh, there, I know that our dev team has big visions. Uh, if anyone knows Shiva and Shri and the team, they've got big visions here. So uh, we're, we're working on all these resources for the partners, you know, the new docs, the new video libraries, you know, we've got our support team in the U S now um, that, that is here. Uh, we've got chat that's going to be coming online in Q1. Um, you know, online chat. So partners will be able to get on and talk to us through chat if they don't want to send an email and do the ticket thing. Um, you know, I've, me and my team, we've been, you know, elf, I'll call it alpha testing chat, kind of self-discovery to this point. Um, but we do have it online and integrated to our ticketing system. So very shortly, we're going to open that up to the partners um, so that you guys can, you know, connect with us again to get the help and support you need on the tool. So. Those are, uh, those are going to be our updates for today. So I'm going to try to navigate back through this chat. I, I see there's quite a bit of stuff going on here. So I'm going to kind of start from the top and say I will answer what I can from the chat, provide what I can give. And then anybody, you know, of course, if we can't get you answers, we can get those over to our support team and we'll get them to the right colleagues internally that can get you guys information. Or Okay, so... <clears throat> um, I'm looking here, any additional notifications for 0365 events on the roadmap? Uh, I, I don't have that info. I don't know if Swami is, is with us or any of our, any, anyone from Dev is here, but- Swami, I do Oh, here we go. Yes, sir. All right. Sorry, was Swami, that? Uh, Swami, do you want to quickly answer those couple of questions uh, on, on, on the engineering side, please? Yes, sir, I'm here. Sir, which question right now? Ryan, do you want to, um, which is a question that uh, you, you need Swami's help on? Oh yeah, uh, a party was asking if Office 365 events would be on the roadmap. So it sounds like doing alerts for Office 365. Uh, yes. That is on yes. the Great. So yes, on the roadmap. Um, and I know if I've gotten questions and submitted to our team in the light of that, Office 365, OneDrive, and SharePoint are all things that I've told the, the our, our team. So those things should all be on the radar. I'm just confirming. 
Uh, Jonathan asked of his V3 out now, how do I migrate from V2? Shri, thanks for grabbing that. Yes. Um, V3 is basically the current version. We are calling it V3. That's the current version of the product that everyone's on. Uh, V4 is the brand new UI and beta. So just to clarify for everybody. Uh, when we will, uh, Sean, wondering when we will have access to the new portal. Release time has come and gone. Yes. So uh, understood. Uh, the the timeline definitely moved right from the initial uh, the initial talks of the new UI. Uh, we went into the beta test, right? And that's you know really that's what beta is all about for us is finding those problems uh, and getting them worked out. And we've had so much feedback on the beta that you know I think Shiva and team and and everyone said we don't want to release a product that's not ready. So we just going to have to say, Hey, here's where we're at with beta. We're going to have to get it right, get it stable, then release, which I agree with. Um, so, you know, unfortunately we had to push that timeline back, but that's kind of where we're at. We're still, we're still diligently working and anxious to get that release to you guys. All right. Is there a plan to add Gmail integration? Uh, Gmail integration. Uh, Swami, your team, uh, do we have plans to do a Gmail? He's, um, hey, Ryan, he's he's looking for like a, a G Suite scan, sort of like how we do Office 365 scanning, but uh, for, for G Suite. Ah, I got you, Pete. Okay. I see so, Mark. Hey, until, until this release, uh, we'll focus on this release. Once the release is done, we can take this Gmail, uh, G Suite. Great. So it sounds like, Mark, we can get that added to the roadmap. And and get the G Suite stuff in there. And yeah, I have come across a few partners still dealing with G Suite. Let's see what looks good. Uh, can you please clarify what you mean by V3 versus V4? I thought that V3 was the current beta. So yeah, no, V4 is the current beta. So V3 is what everyone is basically should be on today. Whether you're on prem or you're on the SaaS version, V3 is the current version of Cyber CNS. Yeah, see some chatter there. Thanks, you guys, for, for going back, Chris, Pete. Yeah, Sean, how long is it? We've been asking for the last four months. Sean, uh, Sean O'Connor, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email, will you? I'm, I'm not sure what it should definitely not be taking four months. Generally, we're turning those around in, you know, four days or less. So, uh, send me that, uh, Ryan at connectsecure.com. Send me an email. We'll get you, we'll get your, we'll get your info. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, if I don't see the filter for mediation companies or mediation, does that mean I'm on V2? Steve, no. Um, no. So Swami, can we, or all right, I'm not sure. Shri, do we know if we showed a V3 updates today. Um, it looks like Steve Pollack's reporting. He doesn't see that. Should we just have him go to support and have our team follow up? Uh, I think the V3 updates will be rolled out. What was shared today usually gets rolled out over the weekend. So I'll ask, um, you know, I'll, I'll double check on that. Maybe Swami has a better answer. But I think usually that's been the pattern that when we present on Wednesday, the same week is when those updates are pushed out. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay, so it sounds like the update should be showing up in everyone's current versions by the weekend. So if you're not seeing the new filters are added, you know, again, feel free to get in touch with our support team and we'll get you guys sorted out. Chris, are there any plans to allow us to exclude recommendations in the compliance summary while also documenting the business justification for doing so? Any plans to exclude recommendations in so it's a, you know, Chris is a good point. I think in, in, on the lines of suppressing a vulnerability and adding a note on that is what I'm guessing you're suggesting. Is that right? Uh, not a vulnerability. So if I'm under the compliance summary, say for CIS, there's ensure configure automatic updates is set to enabled or ensure Windows Defender is set to enabled. Well, we use CrowdStrike for an EDR, it disables Windows Defender. So we don't want to see that recommendation because we're never going to align to it. But I also want to be able to suppress that while saying this is the reason we suppress this recommendation. Does that make sense? Understood. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know we that's something that we can I can quickly double check with engineering, but I think that's something that's valid and we should be able to incorporate that. Okay. Thank you. That would be great. Thanks. 
So, yeah, Ben, absolutely, Ben. Pete, thanks for grabbing that. Support, any feedback, send it to support. Um, and we'll get it. If it's not my hard team, we'll get it to the right to the right team. So. Set up by doing giving money to the final work or release. Yes, yes, Steve, Mark, yes. So any anything you're doing in the V4 beta should be cut over to production. So if you're building out your V4 and you want to keep those settings and keep that data, that should be all good. Something I noticed in the V2 doc is on the 80 account permissions. So So Chris, I see, I see your um, request with the doc mention about permissions needed for Active Directory integration regarding domain admins. Uh, of course, as a security company, we're always thinking least privilege in mind. Uh, of course, uh, some of these platforms and tools require explicit permissions to do things, but if that's the case, we can certainly make it clear, document it, tell you why, provide the evidence, so to speak. So Chris B, if you don't mind, can can you get that over to our support? Just pop that over to support. We'll get that into a ticket. We'll review it. We'll check where the docs are at and see what we can do to clarify it. And uh, we'll get that taken care of. Right, thanks, Chris. Um, Brian, did I recall last week someone mentioned that we could request a migration be enabled? So yeah, Brian, if you want to get on the V4 beta, you just send an email to the support team. We'll get your email address added and you'll get a communication on how to log into the beta and start testing it. Any testing feedback, send it to support. There's also the Teams group that's out there. So there's multiple ways to get us to get us uh, feedback. Patrick, is automated notes being added by Connect Secure updated from the current portal's integration? I found that if I push updates from the portal, it creates a ticket. If the job fails, it closes a ticket with no notes for ConnectWise. So Shri, thank you for answering that. Yes, notes will be added as I, I did actually show that. I know I kind of buzzed through those slides earlier. Um, yes, you will see notes added for the evidence of why things are being done, right? Uh, as we're planning to add Gmail in it. Oh, sorry. That one. Please don't rush releasing V2 is pretty good. I prefer to use Yes, we agree. We want to release a stable version of the product. So that was why we delayed, you know, the release. So beta is doing its job. So again, the more partners we get, the more feedback we get. I think the closer we get to the launch button for everybody. So it's great. Uh, is there a planned integration with tactical RMM? Um, Amir, uh, I... No, so I, I've not heard of those guys, uh, surprisingly, but I do work and reach out to a lot of our RMM vendors. So uh, I have personally been engaged with, you know, about six new RMM vendors um, to find out how we can get on those roadmaps with them and begin those. So uh, I'll note that tactical RMM one, I'll get that added to my list and we will see if we can get engaged. Um, of course, we have open APIs, and we are always happy to interoperate with, with our partners' tool sets. So should we expect pricing changes after the V4 release? Uh, I I cannot say yes or no. I have not heard there are any price changes on, on the product. Um, I don't know if Sri or anyone can comment, but I have not heard of any price changes on whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Simon, is there an ETA for a reporting module to be released in the beta version? Also, same question about white label options. So, uh, Simon, we are currently working on the white label options um, with our QA team. And then I'm not sure on the reporting side. I know we've got the dashboard piece released that include the dashboards, pin boards, slideshows, and some of those data uh, elements. Not sure on the reporting side, reporting in QA. So it sounds like Shree is telling us that the team is actively working on that assignment. So hopefully on our next meeting, we'll have some more to, to report there. Steve, I appreciate where you for. 
Yep, yes, it is. Okay, so it looks like we got that one. Patrick, I apologize in a few minutes, but what's what's the email to request beta access? So again, it's just support at cybercns.com. I dropped it in the chat, everybody. Um, if you want to get on the beta, get access there. Open source tools for MSPs. I've asked them to join. Okay, Amir, awesome. Amir, I've got both of those uh, titles down. I'll uh, I'll put my feelers out to those vendors and see what we can do to get engaged. Uh, is there a rough estimate when V4 is going? Um, I I don't want to give anybody an estimate. I don't like giving times because I don't have one. Um, what I would what I would say is the closest you're going to get to a time is getting on the partner call next week, right? Um, if Shiva's back and his team, he's probably more suited to give you guys a rough date. I, I just don't have access to that. Yes, yeah, so meetings being recorded, Andy. Uh, these generally get posted on Shiva's YouTube channel. So we do post them. They do generally take a few days until they're posted. They're not posted immediately. So just heads up, if you go looking for it, you probably won't see it today or tomorrow. Um, Peter dropped the link in there for you, Andy, to the YouTube Shiva. Uh, sorry, Shiva's YouTube channel. You'll find all the previous uh, uploaded calls there that we've recorded. You'll find them there as well. So just heads up. Um, Ed, I'm... Yes, Ed, we've got API documentation built for it for the current release as well. We've got the Swagger documentation all out there. So um, there will be detailed API documentation available for you guys um, for both products. Simon, um, wondering if there will be a capability in the future to remotely push out lightweight agents directly from the platform rather than using an RMM, a GPO, an MSI. Need to check with Shiva on that, Simon. We want that. I want that. I think every partner here does too. So Shri's got that. Sounds like uh, maybe we can lean on on Shiva on a future yeah. update to tell us yeah. more. Yeah, I think we'll have to, uh, you know, it's a great point that you brought out, Simon, uh, of having the ability to push out the agent without an active directory group policy or an RMM. Um, yeah, but, you know, we're going to take a, you know what I'm doing is some of the questions that we're not, you know, able to have a complete answer. We're keeping a note of that, and then we'll make sure that we address it in the next call. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I see, and yeah, Andy, as I mentioned uh, in the chat, there we've got uh, you've got the YouTube channel, so the recording will get posted there from today's call, so you're able to recap what we went through. We don't actually have a document per se. I have a slideshow deck that I presented i don't know if you want to get a get that or not but um nothing to read per se yet um soon you'll have lots to read though because i'll unleash the documentation for you guys um and you'll be able to start reading all you want now we do have a v4 beta onboarding guide that has been built for the beta um obviously it's beta it is not comprehensive it is not meant to be fully comprehensive but we can get you guys access to the V4 beta guide. If any alert. part, I want them to, we want them to replace the modem probably. Sorry, sounds like maybe that was just one of our partners in the background. Um, if anybody needs the V4 beta guide document, again, support at cybercns.com. Let us know. We'll get you guys. We'll get you guys that document. Um, and then again, I'm I am going to commit to. On the next partner update call, I will have the documentation for the V4 beta published in a space where the partners can start to access it, all partners, um, because I've, we've, we're, we're right there. We're coming around the corner, but it's it's we still – I keep reiterating that to everybody, that it is in beta. So we will continue to polish this off and get it right. Um, and as everybody knows, the, the bane of existence and documentation is it's never done. Um, but it's on our radar and it's a priority for me and my team. So we'll continue to get it updated for you guys. Shree, the slide deck, is that something we could send to Andy or if our partner requested the slide deck from today's call? We can send yeah, that right. We can, we can extract those slides and send it. It's all public material anyway. So yeah, yeah. certainly. Yeah. So again, uh, anyone that's here wants the slide deck, again, just send an email over to support at 
I will send that slide deck to my team right now. So they've got the link and anyone that wants the deck can grab it. And of course, you'll get to see it on the YouTube channel once it gets up to Shiva's, uh, Shiva's channel there. So, great. I think we covered everyone's questions in the chat there. Again, yeah. shout out to all the partners that are helping us beta test. Everyone's patience, of course. Again, we appreciate it. We know we're behind, but again, stability was was more important to us than rushing something off the shelf that just wasn't ready for you guys. So thanks for everyone's patience. Um, get in touch with the support team. If you got questions, need help, we're here to help you guys. And we'll look forward to the next week's update with you guys. And if any of our partners are in Denver this week for PAX 8 by chance, uh, make sure you come swing by. We're at the event as a sponsor and we always like to shake hands and talk to the partner. So come say hi if you guys are there. And otherwise, everyone have a good rest of the day. Good week ahead. Yeah. So thanks, everyone. And uh, we will upload this uh, video soon on the YouTube and look forward to having you all join again next week. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Bye. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, and thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.